What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to uh, my reaction to the first story in Summer Canophobia. Summer Canophobia. Um, so let me just quickly, like, like go get your popcorn, because uh, <laughs> it's going to be a long video again. But um, quickly, before I begin with anything, I just want to say, this has been leaked before even Somnophobia has come out. I mean, at the moment, a lot of people are finding it in some stores because it's the, like, original release date, but the actual release date is in a month's time now, so... I can't believe that this, that, like, this book that's coming out, I'm assuming in 2023, I actually haven't looked. Uh, I, it's crazy that this, this is leaked. Um, so, Entom, uh, <laughs> I want to say thank you to you, but I also want to say maybe you should have kept this to yourself until a lot after Somnophobia. Anyway, it's here, so it is what it is. Uh, but anyway, guys, uh, please subscribe if you enjoy this content. Uh, it's going to be kind of awkward, but hopefully you can just sit back and listen to this or watch this uh, and, and enjoy and react with me. So this is what was in the preview uh, that, we, that we've had. So we're just going to quickly read through it just in case a lot of you haven't seen that preview or haven't read through that preview. So, Kanan Wachowski is straight out of high school, currently working for his grandmother who suffers from Alzheimer's. He is doing anything he can to make sure he has enough money to sustain care for her, even the most dangerous jobs. When Kanan was a young boy, his parents got lost at sea and died. For some reason, this triggered a fear within him that lives on to this day, submechanophobia. Hence the title of the story. Uh... He now is employed at a, as a technician at the Freddy's Fantasy Water Park, owned by a man named Martin Copper. The water park closed over 20 years prior for unknown reasons. Martin wishes to recapitalize his business with the recent grand opening of Freddy's Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex, two towns over. And we also learned that there's multiple Mega Pizzaplexes too. That's a big detail. Uh, making sure all is in working order, Kanan dives into the Mech Aquarium, an aquarium filled with old animatronic attractions that move around in water. Due to their old state, they seem to break down a lot. Despite Kanan's submechanophobia, he has to do his job and push through his fear, which seems to trigger an unknown static in his head. Recently, Kanan was approached by Zeus while he should have been inactive, and Kanan discovered something remarkable. Zeus is like a a serpent, right, um, um, a mechanical serpent. They all have funky names. Uh, a young child's shoe, old and worn for over a decade, wedged in between the jaws of the robot. So there we go. That is the preview. That's all I know right now, and that's all that a, a lot of you probably know. So, I am super excited. We're getting another freaking Tales from the Peterplex book. Oh my gosh, okay. Summer Canophobia by Kelly Parra. I don't know if I'm ready for this. This is this is probably going to be a hype story, honestly. Um, yeah, okay. Let's get straight into this. Uh, the preview left off with Caden, still spooked by his discovery of the child's shoe. He is currently in a discussion with his co-worker and best friend Roy, asking him about his experience at the water park when he was a child. So you went to the park as a kid? Caden asked. Oh, wait, that was Caden. Sorry. I was meant to do that voice for Roy. Yep. Biggest bummer when it closed. My favourite hangout spot. Yeah, you mentioned that. Why did it close all those years ago, anyhow? Roy frowned. Not sure. A couple of rumours went round that Mr. Copper ran out of money. It was busy at the time, though. Always a packed park on the weekends. I mean, I loved the Mech Aquarium like the other kids. Must have rode Chica's ferry boats like a thousand times to get a closer look at the sea creatures. He snorted out his unique laugh. Did you or any other little kid sneak over and look at the animatronics up close? Roy lifted his eyebrows and looked around to see if anyone was close by, then he grinned. Oh yeah, I would always sneak through to the off-limits area and check out my animatronic friends. They were my friends back then anyway. I'd talk to them, and it was like they would listen, you know? Kid imagination stuff. Okay. Sure. I know what you mean. What about the other kids? Roy then says that he has no clue, but he wouldn't be surprised, especially Zeus was a popular one among the children. Why are you asking? Roy asked. Uh, Caden decides maybe he should tell Roy about the shoe. He looks around first to make sure nobody hears him. Oh my god, all the gifs, I, I hate them. <laughs> uh, I found a little kid's shoe in Zeus's mouth yesterday. Roy himself is actually quite surprised by this, despite being someone who was at the park as a kid. 
That sounds really serious. I hope nobody was hurt. After telling Roy thanks, it then transitions to Caden later that day, rin rinsing down the Foxy's Island slides. All is fine, right? Wrong. Wachowski, Martin, his boss, yelled. Martin is strangely pissed for some reason, wonder why. Yeah, boss. What's this I hear about a shoe in the Mech Aquarium? He then tells his boss he took care of it. Martin, you took care of it? Where is it? Oh, you know, I just got rid of it. Next time you need to tell me these things, and don't go getting rid of it. It was an old shoe, looked like it had been there for a while. I took care of it. Why didn't you tell me? Martin says. Martin is rather cautious about this knowledge. Sorry boss, I didn't think it was a big deal. It's not. But I want to know everything that goes on in this park, Wachowski. Oh gosh, something's up with his boss already. Something, <laughs> Something's sus about his boss. Now Caden's smart, so don't diss my guy. Um, Caden rubbed his chin, something wasn't right. How do you think it even got in there, boss? How the heck do I know? Someone years ago must have thrown it down as a j dumb joke. Teenagers were always pulling pranks around the park back then, always causing me trouble. Back in my day. Uh, darn headache, I tell you. One of the reasons I closed. I had to hire security to stop people from sneaking in during the shutdown. I'd put extra locks, but they'd always find a way in. Now Roy's my security when we're closed. Roy didn't really have a life outside the park, Caden realised. Caden wanted to ask something else. I was going to ask you, do you know anything about the animatronics after uh, moving after the power's off? Martin abruptly snickered. His teeth flashed brightly. You're getting the creeps, aren't you? You're getting the creeps, aren't you? I had the technicians telling me the same thing all those years ago. But it's just you guys getting the spooks by being in there with them. Martin pointed at them through the glass. They don't move without power and they certainly won't eat you. No, I didn't mean anything like that, Caden said. Martin suddenly got serious as he pointed a finger at Caden. Bro got serious. <laughs> Just keep me in the loop of everything, Wachowski. Everything. <clears throat> Caden felt a tingle crawl down his neck. Sure, boss. I'll let you know everything. Caden was lying. He thinks something malicious is brewing and Martin's encounter with Sussy Among Us. <laughs> now it transitions to him later in the workday observing the animatronics. There was Zeus, Delilah the Mermaid, Frank the Diver and then Marco. Where was Polo? <laughs> Caden walked around the aquarium to look for Polo. Where is that sneaky serpent? <laughs> that's that's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. Um, it's like, <clears throat> it's the game, right? Where the seekers are like, Marco, and then the hider has to say Polo and then you get a good sense of where the hider is. Also, I'm Losing my voice, so I apologise about that. <clears throat> <coughs> there we go. Um, yeah, these are all the, the thingies. Zeus, Marco, Delilah, Frank, uh, the sharks, I forgot their names, whatever. Um, he found them, deactivated at the bottom of the aquarium, nudged between two rocks. At first he thought it was hiding, but he looked closer. Its eyes were dead, deactivated. Kanan started freaking out. He really does not want to go back in the tank. Polo has died. <laughs> Um, he looked around. There was, there weren't much visitors at the park right now. It was likely no one would notice the serpent was missing. I wish there weren't so many of this gif. It's so annoying. <laughs> it's the most annoying gif I've ever seen in my life. He's trying so hard to find an excuse not to get in the tank. All should be fine, right? Since not many people are around. Kanan Wachowski, please call the front office. The intercom erupted around the park. He, of course, calls the front office. Roy wanted me to notify you that one of the serpents were down, Eva said over the phone. Laugh track. Laugh, please, stop laughing. What? Okay, I don't get it. Uh, great, now he had to go in. Yeah, Eva, of course. Yeah, thanks, okay, I'll take care of it. He hung up. Um, he's going into the water tank. He submerged in the cold tank. The static in his head began to play once again. He swam toward where Polo was wedged and avoided the diver as it floated in front of it, its arms hanging out. Shiver me timbers. Um, yeah, the, the static noise. Swimming, swimming. Then Caden shifted to Sly. Of course, the small shark's eyes looked like they were staring right at him. Uh, there was a small space in between the tank wall and the rocks that Caden could reach in order to fix Polo. Some of the rocks had real moss on them. Caden uh, had wondered if he was keeping the levels of uh, of the chemicals to kill fungi growth. 
Um, <clears throat> there's something wrong about the moss. Why would moss be growing there in the first place? There was years of algae or algae, algae. Al is it algae or algae? I think it's algae. Algae buildup. Caden had advised Martin that the tank needed expert cleaning, but his boss had shaken his head, worried about costs and downtime of the park. He's bringing Polo back to life, trying to fix him from the control panel connected to him. Polo re resurrection imminent. Uh, he turned around as he was fixing Polo. All the animatronics were staring at him. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. For some reason, Frank was closer than the others. He peered at the diver's head. The helmet's glass tinted so dark that no animatronic face could be seen. It felt like Frank was spying on him. The animatronic suddenly jerked, convulsing and twitching. Caden is sitting there shitting himself. He has no idea what to do, but just let Polo have his tantrum and wait until it's over. He's, ha he's still having a tra tantrum. <clears throat> Polo jerked, breaking off a piece of the scenery. Caden sat there in shock as always, waiting for the serpent to settle down. Um, he broke something in the scenery of the old aquarium's decor. A piece of the rock floated by, but it seemed odd. It wasn't like a rock at all, and rocks didn't float. True. <laughs> uh, for some strange reason, he felt he feels compelled to grab it. it. He is drawn to this rock. It was weird and narrow, discoloured with algae. Curious, he tucked the rock into his tool pouch, but suddenly he felt odd. Um, he, his air supply shortened. He could have sworn he filled the tanks before entering the tank, as always he he always did. Sorry. Um, he swam out of the tarp, catching his breath. Um, just to double check, he looks at his oxygen tank. It is in fact empty. He goes to Eva and explains to him, uh, he, who explains to him that the situation is is bad. Obviously, he did not say that in the FNAF book. Yes. <laughs> um, you are using a lot of swear words, and <laughs> I, I usually try to not swear at all. But hey, I, I can't not swear when when you are putting swears in my mouth. Whatever. Um, I hope you guys don't mind. Uh, as he needs a break after nearly dying in the tank. <clears throat> During this time, he decides to go see his grams. He's still he's still thinking about how the rock. Uh, sorry, he's still thinking about the rock he found, but is putting his grams into priority. Here's something interesting. The nursing home in uh, the nursing home grams is in, with a bunch of elders has seventies decor and attire instead of your usual nineteen fifties or forties decor we see now. Huh. Oh, yeah, okay, so it's a detail that stays consistent that it's in the future. Right, right. So, let's say Grams is in her 70s. That would mean that this is in 2040. Interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, that's that's cool. Yeah, it's just kind of, um, yeah, it's, it's in the future. Um... He went to the bakery to get donuts for her. She's not in her bedroom, so she goes to the community room. <coughs> oh, sorry, that was a sneeze. Uh, obviously. <laughs> I don't know what to say. And finds her there, or oh, bless me, and finds her there knitting as that's what she used to do back then. But she could barely remember to do so now after her illness got worse. I think my illness is getting worse too. Uh, I might have a cold, I don't know. Um, it is going to get sad for a moment. His grams uh, had always been a cat, a crafter growing up, always knitting or crocheting. But as her Alzheimer's set in, she lost her interest in crafting. The last year, she'd always be rummaging through her old magazines and newspapers. She'd stare out the window, looking at the neighbours as they walked by, claiming they were watching her, spying on her, telling stories about her. She would mumble to herself and slowly lost interest in her projects. She was the one who told him to do something with his idle hands when he was little. She told him to fix, to create, to build. It broke her heart right now, uh, doing nothing when creating something that brought her so much joy. <clears throat> yeah, interesting themes, yeah. Now he's going to say hello. Hey, Grams, how are you doing? Grams looked up. She frowned for nearly a minute, then smiled. Caden, my boy, you came to see me. How are you? Did you find a job? She asked absently, not meeting his eyes. Oh my gosh, a lot of the photo is a very accurate dep depiction of Alzheimer's. Kelly really nailed it with this, I think. I was about to say, like, when we actually come to read this, when we actually come to do an audiobook on this, 
it is going to be very emotional, I think. And it's going to be, um, yeah, with the, with the whole Alzheimer's thing, like, that is scary. It is scary as heck. Um, so I am already kind of scared to read this by myself because, you know, it, it might be some scary themes. And, uh, you know, Alzheimer's is just, it's terrifying. So, um, I, yeah, I don't think this is going to be a very good rep representation of that. But, you know, we'll we'll read it. We'll read the we'll read the full thing later. Um, yes, I work at Freddy's Fantasy Water Park now. That place is closed. Do not lie to your grams. <laughs> he then explained to her that in fact not it is in fact not closed, and then it reopened. She then takes his word and then glows with it, seemingly disinterested. Unfortunately, a lot of their convos with, went with his grams sounding disinterested or distant due to the disease. Oh my gosh, they're eating donuts together now. She's asking a bunch of things. Eventually, she asks again, did you find a job? Oh, that is heartbreaking. That is heartbreaking. Yes, I work at Freddy's Fantasy Water Park. Her eyes widened. The one with the water animatronics? Grams asked. She seemed to remember in this moment. No, 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 Caden, you can't work there. You can't work there, you can't. She repeated. It's okay, Grams, I'm handling it. She replied, you don't like the things in the water. So scared since you lost your mum and dad. Oh my, Cynthia, how I miss her still. She bit gently into the donut. That water park, though. Something strange about it, I remember. What do you mean, Grams? Strange story. Mystery. Mystery. She repeated again under her breath, her eyes seeming to look out from the room they were standing in. Unfortunately, her short-term memory is a bit thin. He asks her again, and then she suddenly looked strained, confused. I want to take a nap now. Can I take a nap? Kanan then asks no more questions and does not think about pushing his grams despite what she said. He's a good kid. He calls a nurse and gets a nurse to help her sleep. Um, yeah, get a, get a drink, whatever. And then translation to him leaving the nursing home in his car. Uh, yeah. As he drove home, he sat there thinking about the entire day, processing everything at once, almost drowning his grams in what she said, and also the rock. So all of that happened in one day. That's insane. Uh, he hadn't remembered the rock uh, until then, parking his car as he reached home. He dug into his pocket and observed the rock. He rubbed the built-up dirt with his thumb and saw that the edges were slightly rounded. Then it hit him. This was not a rock. It was a small bone. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> uh, I'm a little bit concerned about that. Um, sound, it sounds like a freaking Mary Jo in uh, Fine Player 2. <laughs> Just a skeleton in a room. It sounds like uh, somebody definitely... Well, like, while, while the water park was shut, I think someone died. Uh, or it was shut because someone had died. And they didn't clear out all the thingies. Uh, Raw because it ends the section there at the line and transitions to the next scene. Oh, this is where the story gets really good. Okay. Cause when working at the park, strangely there's more people here than usual. Suddenly the lights in the park blacked out. Families were talking, people were laughing while eating popcorn, ice cream, pizza, but none of the lights were on. What's going on? He whispered. Where are all the lights? Suddenly someone bumped against him. The person was wearing a Freddy Fazbear costume. The darkened furry face stared back at him. Stunned by this, he runs off into the enormous never-ending crowd of people that fills the park. This is not normal. For some reason, he found himself walking unconsciously to the centre of the park, where the Mech Aquarium is. He found his way to the centre of the park, at the Mech Aquarium. It was the only place that was lit up with bright lights. All the sea creatures were swimming around fast. Usually they swam at a slower pace, but it was like these animatronics were... alive. They were alive, trapped. Thriving, eager and trapped in an aquarium that was too small for their energy. Smiling across the maintenance walkways, were a bunch of little kids, pointing and smiling at the glass. Hey, they aren't supposed to be here. The aquarium is off limits, Caden told himself. The animatronics quickly swam toward the glass, staring at the children. The sea creature's eyes seemed brighter than normal, as if they were possessed. The dragon was the largest, and its tail was painted as if brand new. The kids hit the glass of the mech aquarium. Don't hit the glass, he yelled, but nobody listened. Nobody can hear him. The children are beginning to run up the walkways toward the maintenance ladders. You remember how people claimed into the pit was literal, literal entirely and not just symbolical. 
Sorry if you're those. Oh, right, okay. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So let me just quickly explain. I think what he's talking about right now is the fact that um, Into the Pit, of course, is a memory. Probably Oswald's father's memory. That's just a kind of... Just a theory. But um, a lot of... Like, that memory distortion, right? Like, people think that uh, the ball pit... Uh, the memories trapped in the balls in the ball pit are all distorted in some way. And that's why there are six kids in the Missing Children's Incident. People said that's why it was in 1985. That's why uh, it, it wasn't technically a Missing Children's Incident because everybody knew that the children were missing and stuff. So um, I think that's what he's talking about here. I am wondering how this relates. So, wait... Sorry for those. He saw Martin, Roy, and Eva too, staring at the animatronics. They all watched as the little kids climbed up the platform. Boss, Roy, they're making their way up to the top of the platform. They could get hurt. It's a memory, but Roy should have seen... But Roy should have been a child at this time. What? 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 I, I don't get it. He saw Roy... They all watched as... Why is Roy in bold? They're staring at the animatronics. They all watched as the little kids climbed up the platform. Making their way to the top of the platform, they can get hurt. Okay. It's a memory, but Roy should have been a child at this time. Martin and Roy simply grinned, pointing and smiling at Frank the diver and Delilah. It was like they couldn't hear him. Just like at his own workplace, nobody can hear him. Or pay attention to anything he has to say. Nobody can hear him in this memory even when he knows something bad is going to happen. The kids jumped into the platform one by one. He shoved through the little kids, climbing up the ladder. His breaths were short and fast. An entire crowd of kids are jumping into the aquarium. Caden ran, trying the best he could to get to the children. They had to stop him. He had to save them. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, that's, a funny, that's a funny little detail, if it's related. I don't know if it is, but that's funny. Uh, yeah, and Tom keeps teasing that there's like a, a big parallel. I, d I don't know where that is, but it's coming up. The further he climbed, the further they seemed to be. It didn't make sense. He watched as the animatronics sped towards the kids like animals. And then all the children began to be snipped apart, eaten by the robots, one by one. Oh, wow. The diver grabbed a child by its leg as it pulled down. Uh, the mermaid tore one of their arms off. Tears stung in Caden's eyes as he watched the bubbles slowly move up the top of the tank. Someone then grabbed Caden by his shoulder. They turned Caden around. And as a reminder of where his lifelong fear came from, it was his mother and father. Their faces discoloured and decomposing. They were dead. Caden woke up screaming. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Well, then, Tom, you spoiled it. You literally spoiled it. <laughs> right? Like, nowhere here says it was a memory. I don't know. I'm I'm pretty confused by that part. I don't think you're very good at explaining those sort of things. Like, don't please. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't know how to say this. It's like when you when you're doing a live reading, like obviously, like people who are listening to this, like you're obviously spoiling the book for yourself. Uh, obviously, the audiobook is going to be like a lot better and more in depth on things like Alzheimer's and stuff. Like I've said. But, like, I feel like a lot of this is, like, spoiling the spoilers, <laughs> right? So you're like, you're like, oh, you remember how Into the Pit, uh, just the memory, stuff like that? Yeah, that I feel like that kind of spoiled all of that, and, yeah. Anyway, whatever, whatever. Um, yeah, cool, you had a pizza, great. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> the next morning, the phone rang early. He blinked groggily as he killed the Sploinkus. What? Next morning, his phone rang early. Why did you put that? He blinked gro groggily as he tied his shoes. Who could not be? Who could be calling this early? Um, he answered his phone. Hello, hello. I'm calling for Stella Barnes. Cade ran his hands through his hair. Um, she's in a nursing home. The woman on the phone explains that she's overdue and that she needs documentation for her treatment to continue. Caden negotiated with the woman and says he'll find the documentation and get it by the end of the week. As a good grandson, he goes to his grandmother's room to check her old documents and papers. Graham's room smells like the honourable and distinct old person room smell. Several newspapers and magazines littered the floor of the room. 
alongside spools of yarns and knitting needles. Um, he pushed aside medical statements on the surface of her dresser, even some old articles from years ago. Why Grams kept all these, he didn't know. He began to read the headlines. Bears died over 20 years ago. Uh Oh no. That puts a spanner in the works. That puts a spanner in the works. Wasn't there a thing in Security Breach where it was like discarded, it wasn't used? Um, that said, like, bears are extinct in 2035? Did it say 2035, or did it say, like, bears are extinct right now? I can't remember. Okay, I looked it up, and apparently, um, bears like pizza sauce more than honey before their extinction. So, it's extinction at the time of security breach, which means that this story is 20 years after security breach? No, no, because they didn't, oh my gosh, I don't know. They must have been extinct before security breach. But still, still, like if this story is before security breach, it means it would have to take place before 2015 if security breach is in 2035. So I don't know. I don't know. Wait. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's... Okay. I'll have to think about that more. That's an interesting plot point, like a, a timeline point. That's weird. Okay. Bear attack in Meadowbrooks, triplets born on St. Patrick's Day. Then he read the last headline. Missing local boy, Jason Butterfield. Five-year-old Jason Butterfield had gone missing from his home over 20 years ago. Earlier that day, he had visited Freddy's Fantasy Water Park with his family. The parents were distraught. They had no clue if he had been taken from his home in his sleep or if he had run away. They found his window wide open. That was it, but that's not the end of it. That's just one parallel, one part of the parallel that further gets picked up on later on. I reckon this is probably Midnight Motorist, right? Kind of has to be, right? Or is it? I don't know. Um, Jason was last seen wearing a blue sweatshirt, blue jeans, and white tennis shoes. Caden is now wide awake. He remembers the shoe he found. Could it be Jason's? Oh my gosh. It's now later in the next day where he's working and thinking about how it cannot be a coincidence that the missing boy and the white tennis shoes he found in the tank were correlated. He wasn't sure what these clues would unearth, but he was willing to do a little secret investigating to find out. He couldn't go around pointing fingers, no pun intended. Actual quote in the story. Oh, wow, I get it. Um, yeah, because, yeah. Um, he does that. Wachowski. Martin has, is here. Why did I say Joel? What? Oh. <laughs> uh, this is not kids to play. Uh, Caden turned to see his boss, Martin, stalking towards him. Are you alright? What happened yesterday? I thought I told you to always check your air tanks and equipment. Martin hadn't told him anything, actually. Um, Caden thinks Martin may be coming up with excuses to A, fire him, or B, make sure he doesn't find more bones. I'm just glad you're okay, but I've got to be straight with you. If any other accidents happen, you're out, kid. I need employees who know what they're doing. Just take it easy, kid. Then he walked away. Yeah. Uh, beloved Roy comes in asking if Caden's okay because he hasn't been answering his calls. After a little conversation, Caden's detective work steps in again. Hey, Roy, do you remember anything about Jason Butterfield? Roy's eyes widen in surprise. You mean from years ago? Yeah, everybody knew. He went to my school. It was all anyone ever talked about. You knew him. Roy shrugged. Weren't best friends or something, but yeah, he, we played games at the playground. I remember everyone being sad at school. Don't complain about your gifts. I am. I am going to complain about your gifts, gifts, because these. This is the most annoying thing. I like. It's. It's just. It gets in the way. <laughs> it isn't even funny. Uh, people were looking at each other funny. Then time moved on. Jason never came home. The Butterfields moved away, never to be seen again. Kenan then asked, "Do you think he ever snuck in before?" 
why are you asking this? Um, my grams told me about it when I mentioned I worked there. Oh, I see. Well, I gotta go. Be careful when you go in the tank next time. Roy walked off whistling. Caden frowned. Did Roy sound strange when he warned Caden about the tank? Or was it his paranoia? He dismissed the idea, but the conversation had confirmed the growing suspicion. He was beginning to believe Jason hadn't run away at all. Ever since he found the shoe in Zeus's mouth and the small bone that had been embedded in a rock in the tank, he was beginning to think that the little boy had fallen into the mech aquarium and died, and no one had known. Or someone had known, and they tried to hide it. I bet Martin knows. I bet it. Uh, so he cuts him to him working in the workshop. That wasn't a dream he had earlier, by the way. One of the shelves in the old room, he finds old Freddy, Foxy, and Chica costumes. Strangely, no Bonnie is mentioned. Don't know why. Okay, interesting. Um, one shelf was filled with remnants of old Freddy, Chica, and Foxy costumes. <laughs> Wait, is there no Bonnie costume because they don't want people suspicious of sea bonnies? <laughs> Uh, all the way back against the against the back wall was Caden's work table with a defunct squid animatronic. Not sure why he's doing this, but there's just filler of him tampering with this old defunct squid. It never explains why um, why he was doing it, other than maybe he was trying to take after his grandma's advice. If this story was about the squid animatronic, like if there was a squid story, I would be terrified of it, honestly. Um... The lights in the workshop went out. This is not funny, Roy. He thinks Roy is playing a prank on him, or at least trying to convince himself. He begins to think this is no pranks to doing such, uh, and slowly makes his way carefully around the shelves to find the light switch. He hears a faint tapping sound similar to that of footsteps. Puzz, clang, clang. Okay, whatever. A shelf fell. He then heard a loud bang. Uh, turning the switch on, he observed the room. There laid a shelf right at the very workbench he was at a few moments ago. Had he not moved, it would have crushed him. Some quick filler, he calls up Eva to notify her that the shelving fell and Martin and Roy came in and check on him. And Tom, you're not explaining this very well at all. Just stick to the quotes, man. <laughs> Wachowski, how the hell did that explain? How the hell did that happen? What were you doing in the dark? His hands on his hips, the meaning... The meaning answers. How many times have I told you to be more careful? What did I tell you if you had another accident? He told him last time he'd have to fire Caden out of his safety. I thought I saw someone run out, Caden blurted. He left out the accusation that someone may have pushed the shelf over trying to hurt him. Or worse. Wait, are you telling me? Martin squinted. Wait a darn minute, Martin pointing at him. Are you saying the pranks are starting up again? After all these years... He's so being honest. Martin is fuming. Please don't fire me, Caden pleaded. Come on, boss, Roy said. Caden's a good kid. Give him another chance. Martin is mumbling in Angie as he walks out. Roy let out a whistle. Boss is ticked. Do you think this was a prank, Roy? Roy frowned. Possible. You saw someone run out the door? Well, I heard something. I don't know. I don't have any other explanation. Roy then asks if he thinks it fell on its own, and Caden shrugs. Listen, man, I think you should just be honest. I'm your friend. We can go uh, be honest with the boss about this, Roy said. Caden, however, is smart. He then brings up that not only is his own job at stake, but Roy's the security guard, meaning his job can be at stake too, if there really is someone snooping around without him knowing. This is true. I'm telling the truth, Roy. Between you and me, you're the security guard, right? Wouldn't you like to keep your job too? Um, they agree not to tell Martin. Kanan stared at the mess. Something was definitely going on. Was it some kids playing pranks? Or was someone trying to stop him from finding the truth about the mech aquarium and Jason Butterfield? After bolting the shelves up and cleaning the mess, he needed a break and stepped in line to get pizza. He went over all the events in his head. First, the air tanks had been emptied, and now he had almost been smashed by a heavy shelf. He then is convinced that someone is in fact trying to stop him from finding more of the truth. As he's getting pizza, he hears a loud horn blast in his ear. Kenan turned around and he was met with a shot of silly string. Great job, Marie. We played a funny pr trick on Wachowski, didn't we? Daryl, back again, Kaden said in a stern voice. Daryl, his high school bully, has gotten his sister to play a prank on him. No, she's not the one who did everything. 
Right now, it's just him doing filler talk with his buddy, and he's talking about how terrible the place is, and doesn't get why his little sister likes the place. She won a giant Bonnie plush. There's Bonnie. <laughs> Could Daryl be the one who had followed him into the workshop and tried to push a shelf on him? One time, Daryl had sprained Caden's arm and given him a concussion back in school. Mean kid. Uh, were you anywhere near the workshop here, Daryl? Daryl narrowed his eyes at him. What are you talking about, Wachowski? He's trying to fight his guy, uh, the, the guy at his job in the middle of the public. Daryl stepped up to Caden. This time, Caden was not intimidated. Daryl was just a bully who always had to get his way to make himself feel special. Not in front of the little girl, come on. Caden shook his head. Daryl looked at him intently, his face relaxed. Grow up, Daryl. I did. I got a job now. I'm doing something with my life. We aren't kids anymore. After a moment, he looked over his shoulder to see Daryl had walked away without saying a word. Caden took a big breath. He felt that he was finally done with Daryl cunning him, bullying him. Caden, Caden is starting to face his fears. Ah, I see, I see. It transitions to night time. He's trying to sleep. Caden had tossed and turned all night, wondering what he should do about the Mech Aquarium and Jason Butterfield. He wondered if he should go to the police station and show them the clues he'd discovered. He hesitated. And there in the morning, he found himself in front of Meadow Brooks's police station. He's contemplating on going ahead and just turning in evidence. With a backpack slung over his shoulder, holding an old shoe and a finger bone. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? He thought to himself. Even if he told the police what he suspected, would they even believe him? And they started... And then if they started to investigate, Martin would surely fire him for causing him and the park trouble. He'd lose his income. He'd lose his grams' his house. He'd be homeless. Oh my gosh. This is a very um, horrible thing to go through. He hadn't thought about this through very well. He needed more time to think. He then sighed. He turned around and walked right into Police Chief Jackson. Whoa there. Oh, look who it is. Caden Wachowski. How are you doing, son? Watching these chat reactions, you poor souls. Okay, whatever. Um, oh, hi, Chief. I'm good. Chief Jackson Jackson had been the one to come to Graham's house to tell him his parents had been lost at sea. Ah, coincidence. Um, what brings you to the police station? He asked Caden. He looked up, panicking to come up with a fib. Well, um, I, I thought I lost something, but I um, found it and I'm good now. Oh, all right then. Chief Jackson said, how's Grams? There's a bunch of filler discussion and Caden trying to fib his way through it because he's scared to confront the police just yet, so it's not really important. He walks back to the car. When he enters the car, he sighs, putting his head into his hands and thinking what to do. If there was a bone, there could still be a whole skeleton, right? While he wanted to believe the bone could be fake, his gut told him it was indeed real. And that knowledge made him nervous. Jason Butterfield was lost, just like his parents. Oh. Oh. <laughs> he decided not just for Jason, but also for his parents that he'd bring himself to save Jason and bring him to rest. He is going back to the aquarium one last time to find the final piece. He put on his goggles and slipped the breathing regulator into his mouth before he slipped into the chilled water. He was nervous, of course, but he, his need for answers pushed his usual phobia from his mind. Wow. As always, the power is off and the spooky animatronics are floating lifelessly in the water in random places that he swims. He then swims to the bottom of the tank, thinking he could find something there. Caden glanced over to the animatronics and blinked. All the sea creatures had turned in his direction, with Frank the diver moving slightly closer. A chill crept down his back. He thinks it would take him weeks to find anything, considering there was so much fake kelp and rock. He almost called it a day until his tank bumped into a chunk against a clunk of rock. Sorry. He turned around to make sure he didn't cause any damage, spotting a round rock wedged between a small space of sea rocks. It was covered in algae. Kanan reached for the rock and it came closer and it came loose rather easily, sorry. Then he flinched. It was a skull. A freaking human skull. If there was a finger in a skull, there was likely a body or more parts of a skeleton. What should he do? Should he leave it? Should he take it straight to the police, along with the finger bone? He had to do the right thing. He had to notify that this could be Jason Butterfield's skull. A distant humming above caught his attention. Oh no. The tarp above him was becoming, beginning to close. He began to swim up, but he's too late. Trying to pry open the door. He can't pry it open with his toolkit screwdriver. He's trapped in the tank. He turns around. Frank the diver. 
was floating up toward him. Caden's smart, so he swims away from the diver. It follows him. He scanned the tank. The other animatronics weren't moving, but Frank was. How is the diver moving without power? Strangely, all the animatronics in the tank are in one single place. They are now floating in one single cluster. It's the only direction he can go in. He swims toward the animatronics, bearing to face his fears to get away from the diver. The static in his head grew louder. That diver followed him, and he realised that is no animatronic. The limbs of the diver did not move like an animatronic. They were fluid, more human. Caden is swimming in between the animatronics, around the sharks, the mermaid, the serpents, the tangles between them, breathing hard as he does so, terrified at how close he is to them. He knows in his heart the diver is going to kill him. Uh, the diver caught onto him with one hand. Caden jerked back. The diver limb dug into his limb. The animatronic was too strong. Caden struggled and moved face to face with the glass of the diver's helmet. Caden looked into the tinted glass. He stared into the abyss of the helmet, struggling as the diver began to restrain him. He stared into the glass. He saw nothing but darkness. The diver began to choke him. With another hand, he used his will to unscrew the bottom of the diver's helmet, wedging it into the suit. He then fought with the diver. Caden managed to open up the helmet of the diver's suit. Water rushed in. He slipped the helmet off. Martin Oh my god. Oh my god. I actually... You know, I was very sus of him. But I didn't think that the diver would be Martin. That's... That's pretty big. I love that. That's a great twist. That's brilliant. He stared into the shock of his into the eyes of his own boss. What was the diver called again? Um, it was called something. I'm trying to think if if like it's it's a, um an anagram or something. I don't know. It's like an anagram of po copper. It's like rapok. <laughs> he stared into shock in shock into the eyes of his own boss. His boss had tried to kill him. Oh no, Martin reaches for Caden's tank trying to detach it. Caden can barely hold it together from Martin's grip, but then Caden caught a movement in the water. From the corner of his eye, Zeus was approaching them. Jason. Oh, that's a great line. That's a great short sentence. Or just short word. <laughs> Caden blinked. The dragon had come to life without power. The dragon wrapped its tail around Martin, and the other animatronics came alive too. Then he saw all the other animatronics began to glide toward Martin. I feel like the big parallel here is that Martin is, in fact, you know, a parallel to par purple guy. And the children, or the people who went missing, or aka Jason, is trying to, it's trying to get back at him, you know? And then he, can, then he can be freed. The mermaid's hair wrapped around Martin's head, covering his face. The sharks and serpents moved in, surrounding Martin as he desperately tried to swim away. Martin screamed, but nobody can hear him. He watched the air bubbles disappear one by one. Then the animatronics floated away. Zeus let go of Martin. And Caden sat there as the lifeless eyes of his boss drifted. The static stopped. Martin was dead. It's not over yet. It skips, uh, the time skips to later in the week. Caden entered the front office of the park to receive his final paycheck. As he walked, he found himself walking toward the centre of the park. Yellow caution tape surrounded the large centre attraction of the Mech Aquarium. The tank was halfway drained. The animatronics crowded together in the still water and sideways. They look, no longer looked alive, but more akin to dead fish. He freed Jason. The police had sent professional divers to scavenge the tank, in which they found the rest of the skeletal remains. Caden had turned in the evidence he had found of the skull and the finger bone, along with the shoe. Dental records had identified the remains as Jason Butterfield. Very nice. The police did not fully understand what transpired the events that happened those many years ago, but Jason had somehow ended up at the Mech Aquarium in the night and drowned in the tank. Martin Copper had buried him underneath the rocks for no one to discover. Apparently Martin Copper was in serious debt and didn't want anyone to discover the death of Jason Butterfield. He did not explain to the police as to what he witnessed the animatronics do to Martin, so he had claimed he got tangled on the serpent somehow, strangling his, o his oxygen ta tank. Sorry. He then explained how he tried to pry the tarp open to try to pull Martin's lifeless corpse out from the suit. Everyone in town, uh, everyone in the town was celebrating by Caden's, um, by bringing Caden casseroles, praising him for finding Jason Butterfield. Grams was even calling him to come visit so she could hear the full story. The news seemed to have spiked her interest again. 
one last page. Roy comes in. Uh, sorry, Roy comes to give him a final goodbye. Roy apologizes for being caught up in the situation. Um, and before Kanan leaves, he offers him a job. Uh, it's always been Roy's dream to own the water park. The place was his fixation ever since he was a kid. Get this, I bought the place for cheap from the bank. It's going to be the best water park ever. Bonnie, Chica, Freddy and Foxy will all return. There'll be parades. It will be awesome. He revealed a, a shirt that said, Roy's Fantasy Water Park. So buddy, you in? Wow. <laughs> Very cool. Um, full of Martin. Oh my gosh. Uh, I changed my mind. Bobby Dots later. Glamrock Chica. Oh my gosh. Wait, Animatronic Apocalypse starts with Glamrock Chica. That's insane. Okay, well. That's it for Summer Canophobia. Wow. I'm excited to go on to Animatronic Apocalypse tomorrow or... Uh, or later, but um, yeah, that's exciting. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of this story. I think it is pretty good. I wouldn't say it's it's one of the better tale stories, but just from the summary alone, I think it's great. I think it's it's a very average slash above average story. I love the twist that Martin is the the thingy, but yeah, I kind of saw it coming, but I didn't actually. I didn't think he would actually be in the suit, you know. But yeah. Thank you for watching and uh, I will see you later. Goodbye.